Rick and Morty's seventh season has finally premiered after easily the most dramatic offseason in the show's history, with new voice actors replacing the show's co-creator and star, Justin Roiland. But how did the new guys do? Pretty damn good in my opinion. And we have tons of new details and insights into exactly how the rigorous casting process went down, so there's just a lot to dig into with this video. So let's dive into the season premiere, which is called... <sighs> How, how Poopy got his poop back. And this is Rick and Morty season seven. So obviously it does feel like the drama surrounding the recast is overshadowing the content of the episode, which is pretty understandable. Recasting the two main characters of such a big show is a really big deal. Plus Adult Swim and the Rick and Morty team opted to keep these actors' identities a secret until the episode actually premiered. I think this in part was to protect the new younger actors since I'd personally describe the Rick and Morty fanbase as less than chill. Pickle Rick! But I also expect that it was in part because the actors themselves can't promote the show during the ongoing SAG strike. This premiere is interesting because it doesn't really have a B story, so we got to hear a ton of Rick's new voice actor, Ian Cardoni, but only a little bit of Morty's Harry Belden, all at the beginning of the episode. It also featured a new actor for Mr. Poopy Butthole, John Allen. And honestly, I think the new voice actors for Rick and Morty are both excellent, at least from what we've seen so far. I was asking to be polite. The family wants you upstairs to deal with Mr. Poopy Butthole. You kidding me? You've been living on my daughter's sofa for months. There's obviously going to be a learning curve, and we know that they had to actually dub over existing animation to recreate Roiland's delivery for a lot of this season. So moving forward, they'll have much more flexibility to deliver even better performances. When the episode premiered, The Hollywood Reporter also dropped an incredibly in-depth interview about the massive recasting process for the show, which was mostly undertaken by show showrunner Scott Martyr, with Dan Harmon joining a bit later in the process. The interview is excellent and I think really shows that they went about this recast the right way. They basically saw thousands of candidates over the course of six months, truly just above and beyond, to make sure they found the right performers. But they also had an extensive callback process to make sure that the candidates really had the versatility to maintain the characters' voices. As Scott Martyr said, anyone that we felt like had pure moments of either character, we had to bring back and see what they could do on their feet. We brought those guys back back in with a wave of people a ton of times and made them go through a bunch of sides and do all scenes in a way we wouldn't even do normally just to see what their stamina was and if they could stay in voice. We put them through a pretty rigorous process. This again really tells me that they were serious about making sure they found the exact right candidates for the show moving forward. It's really easy to listen to an isolated clip of a great Rick or Morty impression and say, wow, that was perfect. But in reality, these people aren't just here to do impressions of the greatest hits. They have to stay in character for prolonged periods of time, improvise, and add depth to the character. They have to give real performances. Harmon even went in more blindly, opting to just listen to the performances without knowing anything about the performers until after they had actually made the decision. There was a blind process where, for all I knew, I was saying my favorite Rick is a different person than my favorite Morty. It was a very mindful process. I can't answer the question about what I liked about their reads, other than that they sounded the most like the characters moving on and staying alive to me. And again, this feels like such a smart way to go about this, like the entire recasting process was incredibly thorough and performed with integrity. They also opted to do what I had been hoping for since the recast was announced. They got two separate voice actors for each character. I've always felt this could help create a nice performance chemistry between the characters and allow for more opportunities for natural banter and improvisation, but Martyr provided a bit more insight into their thought process here. There were different schools of thought. For sheer quality of life, it'd be easier for the amount of work required for both characters. We watched it over the years wear down on Roiland's voice. It felt unfair to do that to someone. I hadn't really thought about this. The sheer number of voices that Roiland performed had to be taxing, which also speaks to their decision to bring in John Allen to play Poopy Butthole, even though both Cardoni and Belden had been working on PB performances of their own. I will say I thought John Allen did a good job as Mr. Poopy Butthole, but I think the difference is much more noticeable than Rick or Morty, but it's also a much bigger, more bombastic voice. There are some scenes where it sounds a little off. It all started when Beth shot me. I said I was sorry. I know, it tore you up inside. But there are other scenes where it really feels like he nails it. I messed up real bad. I came to say I don't know what to do without you, but I guess I can start by not kidnapping. Cardoni and Belden really did kind of land this role out of nowhere, too. They're both working actors, but it's not like they have any real major credits, which to me is how I really know they cast based on talent. Though I do kind of want to watch this made-for-TV Christmas movie that Belden is in called Christmas Again, which is literally just Groundhog's Day, but Christmas. But as far as this new episode goes, how was it? 
it was decent. A pretty low key season premiere, which usually means we're gonna get a bigger story more tied to the overarching events for the finale. Seems like it's usually premiere or finale, one or the other. But I did really enjoy this boys night out storyline, which brought back pretty much all of Rick's friends, many for the first time in years. And it was fun to have them finally follow up the complete unraveling of Mr. Poopy Butthole's life, which has just gotten worse and worse since he was introduced in season two. Though I do have to admit, I was a bit disappointed that they resolved the bird daughter storyline off screen. It was cool to see her and explore Bird Person's new dynamic as a father, but I really thought we were going to get a prison break episode with the gang all going to save her. I loved hearing Bird Daughter's voice though, an unmistakable Lauren Tom performance. I also found your Federation hit list. Ah, don't go through my stuff! This place is worse than prison! Hopefully, since we didn't get the prison break storyline, this Federation hit list tease will come into play later. Seems like there's some good narrative potential there. The primary story of the episode is the gang's plan devolving from a Mr. PB intervention into an impromptu party with Hugh Jackman night. With the real Hugh Jackman guest starring, who'd have thunk? Hugh married my cousin, which I guess makes him a Wolverine law. <laughs> That is fantastic. Which devolves even further into Mr. PB kidnapping his own kid and the gang trying to kill his ex-wife Amy's new boyfriend, a predator. A predator that Mr. PB himself hired to keep tabs on her. Classic. The concept of the predator PI honestly killed me. Definitely one of my biggest laughs of the episode. I think on its face it was just nice to see a story that was focused on Rick's various friendships. As a character who has spent a lot of the show alienating people and being secretly miserable with his own isolating behavior, it feels like a nice piece of character development that he's really embracing these friendships again. And I appreciated that the show didn't really resolve Mr. PB's biggest issues. It really just set him on the right path to hopefully better himself. The other major laugh I got was in the tag. The gang needed a designated driver so they recruited the Smith's neighbor Gene and as they kidnapped him, we saw his tractor start to wreak havoc on the neighborhood. I honestly might watch an entire movie about a runaway tractor causing mayhem and destruction across a city. But yeah, overall, I don't have a ton to say about this episode outside of the voice casting differences. I thought it was a fun adventure for Rick that brought his friendships to the forefront of the show, which was an important step for the character, and I had a fun enough time overall. I'm mostly just pretty optimistic about these new voices. I was really pleased with Ian Cardoni's performance as Rick and the little glimpses we got of Harry Belden's Morty. It was really encouraging. It just feels like their exhaustive search for replacements was done the right way, and that we'll really see these two performers grow into and flourish in the roles. I'm still deciding how much of this newest season of Rick and Morty I want to cover week to week. Covering nearly every episode last season was a little bit exhausting, and I also just wrapped up weekly breakdowns of Futurama, so I might be looking to spend a bit more of my time writing and researching bigger videos. But if an episode really speaks to me, I will very likely crank out a video about it. That's how I approached season 5 a couple years ago, and honestly, I think you're just going to get better better, more inspired videos if I do it that way. I also really want to hear from y'all about A, how you liked this episode, and of course B, what do you think of Ian Cardoni and Harry Belden's performances so far? I expect that a decent section of the fan base will not be super kind to them, so I want to encourage you to voice your support for the pair. They did a great job and they're put in a really tough place. It's a huge and exciting opportunity for both of them and I can't wait to see what the future holds, in Rick and Morty and beyond. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. Peace. I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks Cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny Two Chells, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.